Hey everyone, it's Paul from One Cast One Fish, and today we're talking amps, specifically power consumption of today's modern fishing electronics. Make no mistake about it, today's electronics are power hungry. With high power chirp transducers with clear view and side view sonar, allowing you not only to see down underneath your boat, but out to the sides as well. In addition, fish finder screens have grown drastically. We're using eight, nine, 10, or even 12 inch sonar screens now. If those larger sonar screens weren't enough, now people are running two, even four sonar screens on their boats. And not to mention add-on units, like the Garmin LiveScope. And if you're anything like me, you've scoured to the ends of the internet looking for answers to your questions such as, is my battery big enough? How much power are these fish finders really going to use? And while you're out there doing your internet sleuth, and I'm sure you came up with the same answer I did, and that's, there's a lot of differing opinions out there. And we all know what they say about opinions. Today, opinions are getting turned into facts as we're going to be testing the real-time current draw from Garmin 106 Ultras and GLS-10 Black Box, along with the Garmin LVS-34 LiveScope transducer on my boat. Let's find out how power hungry these sonars really are. For this test, we're using four Garmin 106 Ultra fish finders. In addition, our testing is also going to include the GLS-10 Black Box and LVS-34 LiveScope transducer. Now in an effort to keep things as transparent and controlled as possible, let's talk settings. Our two console mounted units are using the GT36 and GT15 in-haul mounted transducers. While our bow mounting units will be using the GT54 transducer attached to the Garmin force trolling motor. For this test, our 106 Ultras are going to be running the mapping, the traditional sonar, the side imaging sonar, and clear view sonar. And in addition for this testing, all the unit backlight brightnesses will be set for a baseline of 100%. One thing that's important to remember when using a clamp on amp meter for this type of testing is to ensure that it's capable of reading DC or direct current. We'll get our first reading for our number one fish finder mounted on the console. And it looks like a max amp draw of 1.64. Now we're gonna move to fish finder number two and it looks like a reading of 1.62 amps. And now we'll check fish finder number three at the bow and it looks like 2.14 amps. Now let's use the meter and check fish finder number four located at the bow. And it looks like we're gonna get a reading of 2.05 amps. With that testing complete, we now know that our 106 Ultras are pulling 7.45 amps combined. Now keep in mind, that's with our backlight brightness all the way at 100% and our mapping traditional sonar side view sonar and clear view sonar active on all fish finders. Now I'm gonna go through all of our units and we're gonna change our backlight brightness to 90%. And then we're gonna retake all of our amp readings and see if our power consumption changed by lowering the backlight a little bit. With all our Garmin Echo Map Ultra's backlighting set at 90%, time to break back out our amp meter and start testing. And we'll start with fish finder number one. 1.27 amps. Fish finder number two, 1.19 amps. Fish finder number three, 1.47 amps. And fish finder number four, 1.64 amps. That gives us a total of 5.57 amps for our four Garmin Echo Map Ultras with our backlight drop down to 90%. Just by reducing our backlight 10%, we dropped 1.88 amps. That's almost a 25% reduction in total power consumption just by lowering that backlight 10%. That's pretty substantial. Now it's time to pull out the amp meter again and we're gonna be testing the current draw for the GLS-10 black box for the Garmin LiveScope. For me, this one's gonna be real interesting because this is one of the areas where there was a lot of differing opinions on how much power that black box actually draws. And for this test, we'll make sure our Garmin LiveScope is active. Let's get our meter hooked up on our GLS-10 power wire. And it looks like the GLS-10 black box is pulling 1.47 amps. Now we're gonna get a picture of the current draw for our entire system four Garmin Echo Map Ultra 106s, a GLS-10 black box, and an LVS-34 LiveScope transducer. 
It's worth mentioning for this test that all fish finder screens have been returned to 100% backlight. For this test, we're gonna hook our amp meter up to the main power lead going in for our entire electronic system. And we get a reading of 8.96 amps. So our total electronic system draw with four Garmin Echomap Ultras, a JLS-10 black box with an LVS-34 live scope transducer was 8.96 amps total. Now we're gonna do the exact same test and the only difference is we're gonna lower all four Echomap Ultra backlights back down to 90% and see what our energy savings are. Let's get our meter set up on the main power lead here. And we're looking at a amp draw of 6.70. That means by reducing our screen brightness by 10%, we reduced our total amp draw on the system by 2.26. So that 10% decrease in screen brightness almost equated to another 25% power savings. For our next and final test, we're gonna set up the boat electronics the way I use them on my own boat. That means if I'm sitting at the console trolling or scanning, looking for structure on a new lake or places to mark for fishing in the future, I'm only gonna have my two console fish finders on and operating. My bow fish finders are gonna be put into sleep mode. And vice versa, when I'm on the bow of the boat fishing, I'm only using my two bow mounted fish finders. My console mounted fish finders are gonna be put into sleep mode. We're gonna test our two console operating units first. So I'm gonna come up here to the bow and we're actually gonna turn these back into sleep mode by holding the power button and sleeping the device for both of these bow mounted fish finders. With just our two console mounted fish finders operating and our bow mount units asleep, we're looking at 6.21 amps, and that's with 100% backlight. Now we'll move to the bow to fish, so we're going to put our two console units in sleep mode. And we're going to come up to the bow and we're going to turn our other units back on, and we're at 100% backlighting. With our console mounted units asleep and our bow mounted units operating at 100% backlight with one using the LVS-34 live scope, we're looking at a total of 6.67 amps. Let us do a brief recap of our testing results for today. In our first test, we had four Garmin Echomap 106 Ultras, two on the console using the GT36 and GT15 in-haul transducer and two on the bow using the GT54 transducer mounted on the Garmin Force trolling motor. We found that these four units had a collective amp draw of 7.45 amps with 100% backlighting active. The most interesting outcome from this test was that there was a noticeable difference in power consumption from the console units using the GT36 and GT15 transducers versus the bow units using the GT54 transducer. We then turned the backlighting down 10% on all four Garmin Echomap 106 Ultras, resulting in a total amp draw of 5.57 amps. This was about a 25% reduction in total power consumption by simply reducing our backlighting by 10%. And again, our console units with the GT36, GT15 transducer combo were operating at a lower current draw than our bow units with the GT54 transducer. Our second test found us testing out the overall current draw from the Garmin GLS-10 black box, which came in at a modest 1.47 amps. Our third test then found us integrating the Garmin LiveScope LVS-34 into the system. And with four Garmin Echomap 106 Ultras and the Garmin LiveScope LVS-34 active, our total amp draw was 8.96 amps, with our unit's backlighting set to 100%. We then turned our unit backlighting to 90% and found that our system was drawing 6.70 amps, again showing almost a 25% reduction in power consumption from a simple 10% decrease in backlighting. In our fourth test, we put our two bow units in sleep mode and kept our two console units active, and we found the overall current draw 
to be 6.21 amps. We then put our two console units into sleep mode and reactivated our two bow units and tested our overall current draw at 6.67 amps. I hope you found this video informative and interesting. And as always, if you have any questions, be sure to ask down in the comment section below. And we'll see you next time on the water.